Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome back to a new series on some restoration work we're going to be doing on this really beautiful antique Benwid pipe. Now this pipe is interesting, historically very interesting. Uh, it doesn't have a great deal of value because a lot of these were made, but uh, it's quite old and it's got some, some interesting background. So it was sold by T. Blackman and you can hopefully see the um, the label here, T. Blackman, 10 Cheapside Marketplace, Leicester. Uh, so T. Blackman was a tobacconist in England. Um, I was able to find out that they were registered in 1889. So this pipe was sold sometime in the late 1880s, early 1890s. Uh, couldn't find much more information on T. Blackman. I tried to find, you know, a photo of the shop or something. Unfortunately, I could only find a photo of uh, what it looks like today, and that is really quite sad. Despite that, uh, I was able to find out some more information about the pipe. Now, the pipe, as you can see, has a broken stem, so we'll set the stem aside for right now, because uh, I want to be able to show you this. So, there is a very clear stamping on the shank. It's a B and a W inside an oval. And there's a similar stamping on the silver work. Um, here you've got the, you know, the, the silver hallmarks, but right above that there's a B and a W in an oval. So what this indicates is that the pipe is a Ben Wade uh, and it was made during the Eliza Wade or possibly the Edward and Herbert Wade period. This dates it somewhere between 1883 and 1919. So quite an old pipe, um, at least uh, 100 years old. So quite, quite interesting. As you can see, the stem is broken. And uh, this pipe, by the way, comes to me from my friend Jose, uh, who has asked me to try to not mess up the patina or do anything to dramatically alter the pipe other than replace the stem. So that's what we're going to be doing. The pipe's in fairly good shape. Um, the bowl is, it needs a little bit of work just to even out the reaming, but it's in fairly good shape and that should not be a problem. There's a few nicks and fills and things like that, but uh, Jose wants to keep those. The big issue is this stem. So the stem is an amber stem, and it obviously has cracked, as amber will do. Uh, it looks like somebody might have tried to repair this with glue or something uh, unsuccessfully, but uh, the, the, the stem itself is quite plugged up, but the shank does pass a pipe cleaner all the way through. So that's good news. So we're going to replace this um, amber stem, and I can't get amber, and even if I could, it's, it's difficult to work with. But what uh, Jose and I have decided to do is to replace it with acrylic. And this, it's a little difficult to tell, but this is actually a relatively light uh, orange amber. It's dark because of that, um, let's see if this works, there. Uh, it's dark because of that very black line running through it, through the, the draft hole. Uh, but it's fairly light and it would clean up. We've decided to do the replacement with this uh, orange amber acrylic. And once this is shaped into a stem and polished up, it's going to make a, a closer match for what this would have looked like if we had cleaned it up and, and uh, made it look new. The other major thing other than just making a stem is how we're going to get the stem to attach. So you can see this has these two silver wings here and the way this pipe originally functioned is that they were part of the stem and this whole thing um, screws out. And I'm going to have to get this tenon out of there. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that because I want to be really careful not to damage the silver any further than it's already been damaged. And Jose has asked that we keep the patina on the silver, so i got to be very careful about that. At any rate, we will get this unscrewed somehow. And once we do, we're going to see how the screws are set here. I'm hoping that it's uh, just threaded briar, in which case we're going to ream out the mortise and make a new Delrin tenon to go with the, the new acrylic stem. 
so that this whole thing will, you know, we'll have the silver attached to the acrylic, we'll have the Delrin coming through, and it'll be a nice slip fit, and uh, there won't be any of those issues with the screw on tenon clocking and so on. So that's the plan. Um, a lot of work to do. Not a lot of work to do on, on the stummel itself because Jose wants to keep things as they are and I'm okay with that. I think it's a uh, you know, very classy looking pipe and definitely uh, we want to maintain any historical um, value and integrity as much as possible. I'm okay with the substitution of the acrylic as well. I mean trying to recreate an amber stem is just kind of silly and there are other examples of these pipes that are that have an intact amber stem and you know there's plenty of them so I don't feel like we're in any way destroying a piece of history by doing that. So that's the plan and a lot of this is going to be stem making and I'm going to try to do the stem making in a bit more detail than I normally do. Uh, folks have asked for more uh, stem making uh, content, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some detail on how I actually make the stem for this pipe. So hope you uh, enjoyed that little overview, and I hope that you will join us as we work through the uh, repair of this uh, Ben Wade pipe. If you're not subscribed, please click that subscribe button so that you'll get notifications when we put out the next video in this series. And please uh, click the like, uh, thumbs up little thingy because that really does help us in terms of the YouTube algorithms and getting, uh, getting our videos out there to, to lots of folks in the pipe community. So with that, my friends, uh, I'm going to call this part of the series to a close and I'll see you in part two.